Hey everyone, Maria Marquis here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about what makes the Coda formula language different from other programming languages you might have used. So when we designed the Coda formula language, we wanted to give you flexibility. So there's part of it that will feel kind of like Excel, and part of it that will feel kind of like JavaScript. And that kind of makes the unique Coda formula language. So what does that really mean? <laughs> Let's take a look. Excel usually does things by nesting. You have lots of parentheses. And in the Coda formula language, you can do that. Notice here I've got a formula that says, hey, created by this document. So when was this document, or who rather, was this document created by? In this case, yours truly, Maria Marquis. You can do the nesting. Now JavaScript does things sequentially and separates them using a dot or a period. And we can do that too. So I'm gonna right click this. This is giving me the same result who created this document, but doing it sequentially. So this document, and then who was it created by? Now here's the good news. You can write formulas however you want. So whichever one of these feels best for your brain, go for it, follow that, follow your bliss. So there are a couple other distinctions. And I think the most important is that in Coda, the smallest unit of measure is a row, not a cell. I want you to imagine that you decide you want to change where you live. You're going to move. In the Excel world, where the cell is the smallest unit of measure, that would mean all of a sudden you have a completely new identity. Your family and friends won't recognize you because you've moved to a new location, a new cell. In Coda, because the row is the smallest unit of measure, that means that even if you move location, like, oh, Chris Adel is now gonna move down to the bottom, you are still Chris Adel with this email, with this phone number, with these skills, and this daredevilness ranking. So the row is the thing, the noun, and all of the things that describe it, those columns. This is the most important part. You're dealing with a database, not just a grid of cells that you have to gobble together with duct tape and spit. Let's take a look at the next really important thing when we're writing Coda formulas, and this is called chaining. So remember at the beginning of this video, we talked about the little bit JavaScript where you start at the beginning and kind of move through? That's called chaining. So here, I wanna figure out who all of the jugglers are in my circus performer group. So I'm gonna right click here, and what I do is instead of doing a lot of those parentheses, I start with the biggest thing, the table. And then I get down to the part that I want. And I separate each of those steps with a period. So here I'm saying, hey, Coda, look at that circus performers table for me. Then I want you to filter it where the skills contain juggling. And then I want you to make a bulleted list. Now again, if you like doing parentheses, you certainly can. You can do the nesting. But this chaining allows you to kind of follow it along just like a sentence in human language. The next thing to keep in mind is that everything in Coda has a name. So you don't need to be calling on the coordinates, you know, A1 to B3, G6 to G8. <laughs> you don't have to do the locations. That's why rows are so helpful. So you just call things by their name and that will pull them through. So here, if we take a look at my jugglers again, Notice I'm not doing locations. I'm saying, hey, show me the skills, show me the juggling, show me the table. But here's the really cool thing. If you change something's name, like maybe skills seems like the complete incorrect way to refer to this. I wanna call this talents instead. What you can then see in your formula is because everything has a name, it gets updated automatically. So you don't need to change your formulas based on where things are. You just call them by their name and it's going to stay with you nice and stable for the duration. So that's it. Those are some of those key rules that help us really figure out what makes the Coda formula language a little bit different. So now it's your turn. Start exploring. Think about the type of formulas you might wanna write and I'll see you next time.